Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2 with my partner, John Coleman, and the fabulous virtual gourmet, John Mariani. The smiling gourmet today. <laughs> I'm a happy guy. Hey, John, it's, uh, it's still early in the year. People are still making predictions. Uh, tell us what in the uh, food and beverage and the travel industry, what do you see new for 22? What do you think is going to happen that's going to be different? Mm. Well, I do. We are we are taping this uh, sort of. You still tape things, just record things, right? <clears throat> we are talking in January here of 2022, as you said, it's still early. But the predictions seem to be that COVID will peak, the surge will stop. Um, the idiots who don't want to get the vaccine are not going to get it, but they may all die off. Uh, but in any case, um, it will. It does look like it's going to end. Now, even before it ended, during the fall, restaurants had snapped back mightily. Um, people were going back. They were packing restaurants all through the fall and through, um, th through the Christmas holidays. But now, first of all, January and February are very slow periods for restaurants anyway. Um, but with the receding of COVID, I think there will be an explosion um, of, of a magnitude that they've been wishing for for the last uh, two years for the very simple reason that people really do want to get out. People love to go to restaurants. They're tired of cooking for themselves. Uh, some even want to get dressed up and go. Uh, so I think that restaurants are going to do splendidly. Um, in big cities where uh, a lot of workers have not returned to their offices, that's going to be a big problem for lunch. Um, lunch business is going to be off um, because they just don't have those executives, businessmen and women coming down from the 13th floor. Are there any 13th floors? No, I'm not allowed to. <laughs> 12th floor and the 50th floor and uh, eating in the restaurants or the one across the street. That's going to take a long time to recover. But um, yeah, people will be going out. <clears throat> restaurants will be booming again. And uh, that's because, as, as with every time in the world, that whether it's uh, World War II or World War I or the Spanish uh, flu ends, people exult. And um, so that's really, really good. The end of COVID will, will change everything. Well, I think, you know, it's very possible, of course, that COVID won't end or will come back in a new form. But I think you're right in the sense that um, we're learning to live with it, if you want, even if it does come back. The Spanish flu uh, did make it around the world a number of times, lasted a number of years. Of course, we now have the advantage of vaccines, whatever that means. Um, so I think it's going to be different. You can't look back at the Spanish flu and say it's going to be the same thing. But I do, I, I'm, I'm more pessimistic than a lot of people who think that keep seeing the end of the of uh, COVID. I, I don't see the end of COVID. I see it taking a long time to peter out. But nevertheless, I think you're right. I think w most people are just sick of it and we're, we're learning to live with it is one way to put it. We're also kind of sick of all the lockdown mandates and people are rebelling against that. So either way you look at it, uh, I think you're right. I think restaurants and quite frankly, sporting events and everything else Mm -hmm. uh, I think schools are going to be the last bastion of lockdowns. Yeah, which uh, need uh, the school children need it more than more than ever. Yeah. Anyway, to get back to uh, food trends, um, prices are going to go through the roof. They already have. Yes. And all sorts of reasons, some of which has to do with COVID um, in terms of hiring, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, but the prices of uh, food have gone up um, 10 12 percent at least a lot of this has to do with supply a lot of this has to do with those uh those boats out in the oceans um i go to my uh favorite grocers and, and fishmongers and others um saying well has that have those imported foods come in from china and said, nope we haven't had any for three weeks i was at trader joe's yesterday and uh, I mean, it, it, it looked like uh, you know, the, the, the last train out of Germany. Uh, there was not, not the, 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 the stalls were not stocked very well, well stocked for those kinds of foods that come in from uh, from out of uh, out of uh, the country. <clears throat> so you're going to have uh, that rationale. 
Um, it's been a, a brutal winter in many respects. We've had weather problems, <coughs> excuse me, and that uh, uh, has a big effect on especially cattle because the, the demand for beef has never been higher, but by the same token, um, there aren't that many cattle out there. You know, John, uh, you mentioned all the boats lined up in Long Beach Harbor, but there's a lot of boats lined up on the East Coast as well. Uh, well we always hear about Long Beach and L.A., Port of L.A., because we're out here, and it's made a lot of news. But um, the, the what do they call it, supply chain uh, shortage? It's it's all over. It's a, it's also a global phenomenon. So it is. I mean, the, the stuff is not coming in from Italy. It's not coming in from France. It's not coming in from from the United Kingdom and Spain. Olive oils, cheeses, they're all yep. back. Mm -hmm. So in any case, uh, prices are going to go through the roof for everything. And uh, this inflation, no, no matter as we, as intelligent people know, whoever is president of the United States has little or no control over inflation because of these kinds of factors. No, that's our friends at the Federal Reserve. Well, to a certain extent, and they're probably going to act. But that being as it, as it as it may, um, what I do see is that, um, in addition to what I've said, is that the food media is going to focus, as they have for the last couple of years, because of the diversity requirement focus more on ethnic eateries. Um, so there's going to be more focus on the little Cambodian place down the corner from, from you, the little strip mall Chinese place, that wonderful Indian place that's doing uh, marvelous things with dosas. <clears throat> You're going to see a lot more of that. Um, and the, the ironic thing is that their prices are going up too. I mean, they not, may not be serving USDA prime beef in their food, but their prices for choice beef is uh, also going up and vegetables and everything else. So you can expect that when you go out, hey, honey, let's go out for Chinese. Um, yeah. It's going to cost you 10 bucks more than it did a, a year ago. John, does, generally speaking, does inflation, which we're already feeling, does that hurt small restaurants more than uh, the big, large, I don't think of change, but the the famous uh, uh, haute cuisine restaurants? Um, yes and no. Uh, it affects the neighborhood family restaurants insofar as the type of people who frequent them are very often on a fixed budget. Ah. So if you say, hey, let's go out to the local barbecue joint that we've been going to for 20 years, and suddenly that's, that's another seven or eight, do seven or eight dollars, uh, you're yeah. going to cut back on that. Um, those people can afford to go to the deluxe restaurants. Um, they are also contending with uh, reduced expense accounts um, uh, because the companies they work for do not want to go out and be spending $500 on a bottle of wine. It looks bad. One yeah. thing. And um, the shortages will affect that also. So, yeah, it's going to be across the board. But, of course, the, the deluxe restaurants can handle it a bit better depending, depending upon – Real estate, depending on what their lease is with the landlord, it all all boils down to that. As one restaurateur told me, he says, "We don't sell food; we sell space." Good point. Yeah, and also, I guess it's going to be a big question about, uh, especially uh, during these uh, winter months, till the spring comes out, of uh, how many people they can actually pack in to a, an enclosed restaurant as opposed to uh, the uh, uh, fresco uh, sort of atmosphere we've had for the last uh, couple of months. So no, uh, I think the yeah. wine prices will stabilize for, and this is a supply and demand uh, mm. issue, that there's more wine in the world than ever. And the, the number of people who drink wine, generally speaking, <clears throat> has gone down, even in Italy, even in France. Um, they don't drink as much wine as they used to do. And they say, well, yeah, but they, they drink better wines. And that's true also. <clears throat> but they're not replacing two bottles of inferior wine with two bottles of pricier wine. They're replacing two bottles of, 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 of plunk, plunk with one bottle of good wine. So there really is a fierce competition out there. And uh, they, I, I've seen prices cut and discounted more than ever, um, even during the holidays, maybe especially during the holidays when they really want to sell. So even some of the very big names in, in wine uh, – uh, have not gone up. Although I just saw a new release of uh, Chateau Petrus for fifty six hundred dollars in the oh, market. Jeez. What you know? Well, I, I, how did how did that taste? Was it worth the the price? How does that what? Uh, oh, you didn't buy that. 
No, 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 no. Oh, I, I, I thought you. I thought you were going to tell us <laughs> and how wonderful it was. My social security check has not come in this month yet, so I'm, I'm waiting to make that purchase. By the way, this board of economic advisors over here, uh, these uh, learned three, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Uh, forgot to mention, I don't want to leave them out. Part of the problem uh, of those empty shelves in Trader Joe's is that once the stuff gets here, uh, there's a shortage of truckers to bring it. So uh, it, I, I didn't I, I do want them to uh, avoid them because they, they go to restaurants too. Uh, but we just don't have enough of them right now. Uh, great yeah. career opportunity. I, I, I see stories about uh, young men and women who are becoming truckers uh, because the, yeah. the, the folks who bring it around from the ships are making uh, 80, 90, $100,000 a year. Hard work, long hours, okay. but uh, we do have a shortage of them. I've put in a lot of hours to make that kind of money, but yeah, it's it's in fact true. Yeah. Now, so are those the main predictions, John? Any smaller predictions at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I could I could spend a lot of time. I'm going to say, as I said, domestic spirits like bourbon and rye will increase because the prices of Scotch and uh, French uh, cognacs and so forth will go up. And there's much, there's just much more interest in American whiskeys at this point. Uh, tipping will increase because Americans are generous people. And they know that the people who are serving them are good people. And I think that the typical tip may go from 15% generally to maybe 20%, and the big cities maybe even above that. I think that tasting menus will recede. These ridiculous $350, $400, $500 tasting menus are for a very few. I didn't say elite few because you don't have to be uh, elite to uh, make a stupid mistake like spending that kind of money. Um, so I think tasting menus, whether you have 15, 20 courses, is something 99.9% .9 of Americans couldn't care less about. Um, I mentioned that lunch will be weak. Um, I think that fast foods will focus more instead of trying to get another item onto the menu, which many of the, the fast food chains have flopped with. You know, they, they spend millions of dollars on marketing geniuses consultants at McDonald's. And to, well, let's come up with, what do we do? Shrimp. You know, like nobody does shrimp. Okay. Um, and last but certainly not least, staffing is going to continue to be really, really difficult. <clears throat> so that I would not, when I write my reviews, I'm very careful not to say much about service, uh, even if it's lacking. Because I know that probably the staff itself is lacking. Instead of having ten waiters, they only have six. And uh, experienced the other night. This is the other night at a big deal restaurant here in New York, where uh, it took twenty minutes to get the wine and took fifteen minutes to get the cocktails, and the food came out, and they had to ask for bread rolls. But I'm not going to blame that on them anymore because uh, they are really strapped. So that's what I see in twenty two. Um, a lot of good in so far as people will be going out. There'll be much more variety. Um, but prices will be up, and um, the wine will be better priced. Um, it's going to be a good year, 2022. I guarantee it. Mm. Well, all in all, it doesn't sound too bad. Uh, it doesn't sound like fun when it comes to inflation, but well, you get you know we get used to inflation. We hate it, um, and we despise it, and it will probably come down, but not for the foreseeable future. But remember, we had a long run of more than a twenty. What was it? 12, 15 years without inflation going up by so much as a yep. percentage point. So yep. we've been very, very lucky. We have. Well, John, uh, here's to you. Here's to the new year. And uh, I hope we get to dine together this year. That would be my fondest wish. We'll even bring Abe. <laughs> All right, well, Abe. Well, no, I, I meant Abe, my good friend Abe out there, but we'll also bring <laughs> I Art. Mean, yes. a Abe. <laughs> yes, well, if it be, as long as you do, as long as you can show, shove some carrots over to my plate and some yeah. veggies, I'm I, I'm a happy boy. Okay. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.